Exercise 5. In this exercise, we take a look at the functionality built into Inventor for assembling components, the bottom-up method. We begin by going to New and select Standard IAM, which is Inventor Assembly. Just double-click. Now from here, yours might say Assembly 1 or Assembly 2. It just goes in order, which one. I've done this earlier, so it re remembered Assembly 1. Starting me off on Assembly 2. So I'm going to begin, though, by going to this little button up here, Place. And you want the icon that has a little folder with the box on it. And this allows you to select a component from the directory. So in this case, you want to go to your directory of sample files that was provided to you. Find the Exercise 5 folder. And the first thing you're going to bring in is the bracket. Select the bracket and hit Open. Now you might get a message saying that, um, may, may or may not get this message. If you're doing it from home, you will. If you're doing it at school, you will not because uh, these were originally created on the educational version. Just hit yes. And bracket pops in automatically pretty much there. You don't want to make a duplicate of it. If you were to click a second time, it would actually add another one and another one until you could stop clicking. But I'm just going to hit escape. If you have additional ones in there, you could just click on them and hit delete. But you only need one. Now we're going to go ahead and put in another component. So we click again on Place Component, and this time we're going to look for the yoke mail. Go ahead and hit Open. Again, you get that little message. That's OK. Just click and drop it in the upper left over here, just away from the assembly. Hit Escape as soon as you're done. I'm just going to set it up to make it look a little clearer there. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is we want to go ahead and mate these. Now, make sure you're in the Assemble toolbar and we have Constrain. Go ahead and click on Constrain. Constrain will automatically pick, depending upon what we select, uh, a type for us. But So you don't really have to go through these and actually handpick them unless you want to customize it. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and select the cylindrical face of the post sticking out of this uh, this boss. Then select the hole that it's supposed to align to. But here's the neat thing, you just you can click on the axis that appears there in the center when you move close to it. And you'll see it will pop into position. Just make sure you hit apply on this little box here and now you could continue adding constraints. In this case we'll add a, a, a coincident constraint between this top surface of the gray part and then if you shift and drag with the left uh, uh, middle mouse button, you could select this underside face that we want it to go coincident to. And it should snap to it. Make sure you hit apply and then cancel out of the place constraint box. Because at this point we've removed some of the degrees of freedom, which means that we could go ahead and grab the part and drag it. And you'll see it will dynamically rotate for us. Okay, now we don't want to remove all the degrees of freedom in this particular instance uh, because we do want to actually simulate the motion of how this component will work and, and move once all the components are assembled. So let's continue on with place. And then again, we're gonna this time we're gonna find something called the spider. Select the spider and hit open. And just hit yes there. Now we're gonna drop this over to the left and then hit escape. So you don't want another instance. And now we're going to go ahead and place this in between the legs of the yoke, the yoke mail. Now to do this, again, we, we have to go up to Constrain. And we have to determine what we want to constrain first. Do we want to constrain the holes to one another or the faces to one another? In this case, the holes might actually be a good idea. So I'm going to click on this hole right here. And we see the center axis appear. And then over here, move over to this hole. And when you see the center axis, go ahead and click on that as well and it should apply the constraint. Make sure you hit apply actually. Now the next thing I want to do here is I'm going to hold shift and middle drag because I want to show you we want now this face here of the spider I'm going to rotate it to connect coincident to this face on the inside of the yoke. Click on that, hit apply and cancel out again. Now, 
if you uh, go to the home here and now click on this part, you'll see it will rotate and pivot while this rotates around. Just position it so it looks somewhat straight on the seismetric view, in alignment I should say, and let's place the next component. The next component is going to be the yolk female. Go ahead and select that and hit open. Drop it to the left and then hit escape on your keyboard and we'll continue on with the process of constraint. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, we'll align these concentric to the hole. So find that center axis, click on that, to this open hole here, click on that, hit apply. Now you can rotate around so you can see the opposite side. So now we want actually this face that's opened up here to be coincident. I'm going to rotate around zoom out to this face of the yoke. Hit apply and then cancel out. Drag this down. You slowly move the pointer as you grab with the left mouse button. You could relocate it. You can see we do want to maintain some of those degrees of freedom here so we could lock this in. So let's go back to constraint and I'll go ahead and select this flat face and constrain it to this face here. Now, nothing might happen, but what we can... So what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and we want it to be parallel to one another. So hit this little double arrow to the lower right of the place constraint option. It'll bring down some options here. Use offset as resting position, and that will enable it to align itself. And the reason why it had to do that is because there is a very small distance gap between those two faces that we can't really see visually here. So let's go ahead and hit apply and cancel. And now since you have it connected, we can again simulate our motion just by grabbing the top of this boss, the left mouse button depressed, and moving in small rotary motions so around that head. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try and put in the pins. So let's go to the Open or Place folder and find U-Joint Pin 1 and open that up. Just click to drop it, hit Escape, and now we're going to go to Constrain and just select the cylindrical face in the center and then select the axis in the center of this hole here and should position it. Hit apply. Now for the next one, let's go with tangent on the options here and then select this face to the cylindrical face of the, the uh, yoke. Now unfortunately in this case if we rotate around it popped it to the back side. So we might actually want to flip that. And the best way to flip that is just on the Solution tab here. Make sure you click on this option. See that there's the outside and there's inside. Make sure you select inside. If for some reason you went too far and hit apply as I did a minute ago, just make sure you could go ahead and cancel out and hit undo and then try it again. Try and apply the tangent mate. I'm going to cancel out now. The next thing I'm going to do is add the additional U-Joint Pin 2s, the two U-Joint Pin 2s. So select that, hit open, click two times because you want two instances and then hit escape. And for this one, we'll go to place, oh, sorry, uh, constrain, not place. And again, we'll go with the concentric face here this hole, hit apply, go to tangent, go to solution inside, select this face to this face, hit apply. Now for the next one, we'll go ahead and select the cylindrical face. Oh, actually
actually. Um, wrong there, my mistake. We have to go back to mate. So turn off tangent. S and click on the number one first section. Select the cylinder. Rotate it around. And select the hole. Now you could go to tangent. Solution inside. Click on this face to this face. And one of the things I must have missed there, as you can see it's not aligned, is I forgot to hit apply. So I'm going to hit undo here. Now I'm going to try it again. Constrain, coincident, select the cylindrical face, and then select the center. Hit apply. Now you could go to tangent. Select this face to this face. And unfortunately, we see that it's going on the other side. And the inside, we'll go ahead and flip it around. Now, if they're overlapping, you may have to relocate it with just grab, getting out of the place constraint and moving it closer to the end that you want it to align to. Otherwise, hit Apply and Cancel Out. Click on the Home. And let's test this out now. And as long as they're not moving around you should be in good shape. And in this case actually I do see that the pin must have flipped around and is not oh I see it there in the preview but it's not showing up properly. I'm not sure what happened there but I think we're okay. Because it's showing we have two U-joint pin twos. It might be because it's an imported pin. Anyhow, now let's go ahead and we're going to assemble a subassembly. So go back to place component. This time find the crank assembly and hit open. And just you'll have to hit yes three, four times because there's a series of parts that are built into that subassembly. Now you could do these individually, it just, uh, but in this case those are all really redundant mates that we've already learned how to add why not uh, just try a subassembly in this case so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the constraint tool I'm going to go ahead and constrain or line this uh, select the axis to this center axis hit apply now I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of here after I hit apply just so I can move this up so we can see what's going on because what we need to do is align the flat faces. There's a flat here, and there's a flat on the inside of this as well. So we need to align those. So let's begin with rotating it so we can see this flat face and go back to constraint, select this face, and now rotate around and zoom out and pull in the shift key until you can see the flat on this face right here. and it should have rotated them to where they're in alignment together. Now for some reason they are not aligned like this is maybe opposite down below here then you could flip it but I think we're in good shape here so let's hit apply and then finally we're going to add a distance mate. Well, let's go ahead and type in an offset first of all and the offset for the distance is going to be one millimeter so we could type in one mm. Get rid of the inches there now select this face and align it to this face here. And it should have kept the small distance gap of one millimeter between the two components. So that's using an offset. Hit apply. And let's just test to make sure that we did this correctly. Just grab this post and if it all rotates together, you did it correctly. And that completes exercise five. Actually, make sure you save it. It's actually E5.